Hello everyone. Hello everyone, welcome to Internet Academy. Today we're gonna to talk about the age of revival. So uh, we have already seen the age of Chaza and today we're gonna to see age of revival. It's a short thing, so by within like 20 minutes I should be able to do it. It's like a fast revision okay we're not going to take a lot of time so just bear with me so first the age of revival we already know age of charles has started by like 1342 1400 now this one starts from 1400 to 1550 that's the year don't forget it that's the age of revivals year so let's jump into it now the background story is pretty simple henry V is ruling england but he is kind of ambitious, meaning he just wants to uh, rule France as well. He, for him, England is not enough, so he wants to rule France as well. So what he does is he starts a rebellion, he goes for a fight, and he does many things there. And finally, uh, the French lose, and then obviously uh, he demands that he becomes king, and he marries Catherine there and uh, unfortunately he just dies off at a very young age and uh, for the others follow him okay so Henry Fy after Richard True is ruling the country right now now there is a rebellion inside and uh, from the French do not give up even though they lost it's because of Joan of Arc Joan of Arc comes out there and just saves the day she gets back the French kingdom now, Joan of Arc, uh, reference you can see is by George Bernard Shah. Joan of Arc work. Okay, so remember that. Now, Cad's Rebellion is pretty simple. There was a guy called J Jack Cad who actually is fighting with Henry VI, not Henry V, to just, you know, uh, to take over. But what happens is during this fight, he is mortally wounded. Because of that, he dies. Simple. Then let's talk about War of Roses. Now, here, uh, there are two politically motivated families at that time. So, after Henry VI is dead, two houses are starting to fight. That is Lancaster and York's. So, Lancaster is where red symbol, uh, red rose. So, you, you can remember it L with R. Okay, L R Y W Y W C A. That's easy to remember, right? So, just Y. W and LR, that is Lancasters are red, Yorks are white, led to the Hundred Years' War. This eventually led to the Hundred Years' War. So that's about it. Next, first, let's introduce you to autobiographies. Autobiographies are those that are written by ourselves. Okay, uh, uh, so what happens is the first known autobiography is the book of Marguerite Kemp, 1436 the book of Margaret Kemp, 1436. And now she was into all this voodoo kind of things, rituals, mystics, and all those things. So Marjorie was a priest. So um, she, it is not like pure, what to say, uh, church-oriented kind of spirituality. This was uh, going into occult and all these things, okay, kind of dark. So uh, reference that we can see is, in Britain, of course, the book of Marjorie Kemp was an autobiography. Similarly, in US, it was Benjamin Franklin's autobiography. We all know who Benjamin Franklin was. He was the founding father, one of the founding fathers. Okay? And uh, he did many things. So that is clear, I suppose. Now, let's get into poetry in the Age of Revival. Now, the best poet before this age was obviously Chaucer. And now, obviously, they're going to follow Chaucer's style. So that is called Chaucerian. When you follow Chaucer and Chaucer style, it's, they are called Chaucerians, English Chaucerians. Now, why we call them English Chaucerians is that some Scottish people also follow Chaucer style. That's why there is a difference here. And they follow the diction of Chaucer. The first one is Thomas uh, Hockleve, that is 1369 to 1426. So he wrote these books. So to the king's most noble grace, to the knights of the garter, letter of Cupid. So I'm not, I have not taken all the works, but I have taken certainly important works. Only important works. We have not touched on all the works. Okay, it's just not possible to do that. So Tom, 
Thomas Hockler, and to the King's Most Noble Grace, to the Knights of Carter, Letter of Cupid. That is next, the Regiment Princess. So, future King Henry V, they dedicated this, okay, the Regiment Princess. So, Prince of Wales before King, before he became King, he was Prince of Wales. And uh, that is also like some lessons for the King, as young King. So, that's Thomas. Next, John Lydgate. John Lydgate, remember in revival, John Lydgate is very important. He was like from 1372 to 1449. He was educated in Oxford and he was a monk. Remember, he was a monk. Uh, so he wrote the uh, Troy book. That's basically the Trojan War series. So long poems, okay, huge poems. The Siege of Thebes, one of his best works, and it's a long poem. And then Fall of Princes, composed with Knight's Tale. Now, there's a reference to Chaucer because we see in Chaucer, we see knights, squire, and all these things. So, this is composed with Knight's Tale, the Fall of Princes. Okay, and then Serpent of Division, which is a prose work. So, remember these works. And of course, you can just revise these things just by listening to the audio. Uh, you don't need to even see the slides. You can just put on and have a walk. At least subconsciously, you'll remember these things. Okay, so John Lydgate wrote Troy Book, Siege of Thebes, The Fall of Princess, The Serpent of Division. So that's next. Let's talk about Stephen Hayes. So, Stephen Hayes, who's Stephen Hayes? So, Stephen Hayes was from 1475 to 1525. They are all English Chaucerians. Remember that? He serves during the period of Henry VII. Now we come from Henry V, VI, and we come to VII. And then most infamous will be Henry VIII, that we'll be talking about later. So his famous, important work is Pastime of Pleasure. Remember Stephen Hawke's Pastime of Pleasure. Next, like Lydgate, John Skeleton is important. 1460 to 1529, he was an amazing satirist. He wrote amazing satires. So whenever you talk about satirist, you should always remember Jonathan Swift. He is very important. He wrote for Henry uh, seven mother. Okay, for her, he dedicated this work. Moni's life, the Pergnasium. Okay, so Burg of Court. It was a satire, same as the prologue. Uh, what happens is the same. It's just like Chaucer going on a journey and they talk in Canterbury Tales. Now in a ship. The same story happens in the ship. Now we also can connect it with Anita Naya's Lady Scoop, where it happens on a train. So you can see the connections. Then another allegory he wrote, that's Magnificence. Okay, so we have seen like uh, Thomas Hockley, John Lidgate, Stephen House, John Skelton. Next one is Alexander Barclay. Okay, so Alexander Barclay was a priest. So mostly we'll be seeing a lot of monks and priest during this time okay so alexander barclay was a priest and uh, he wrote a wonderful book the ship of fools so the storyline is pretty simple these fellows are all taking a ship and they want to get to paradise with the ship so that's the bottom line there next is benedict burge so we don't know when he was born 1483 he died okay so he wrote a work called the secrets of the philosopher then a poem in praise of Lydgate. That is for just now we saw about Troy, the book of Troy, right? So just to praise that, he wrote a book called A Poem in Praise of Lydgate. Now, The Secrets of the Philosopher was a wonderful work. Now, here you should understand um, philosophy was kind of important during those days. Okay, so many works we can see. Next, George Ashby, important writer like Lydgate. A skeleton, George Ashby, civil servant, and he was a poet. Complaint of the prisoner in the fleet is his work. Next work is active policy of a prince. First one is complaint of the prisoner in the fleet. Next is active policy of a prince. This was an important work. Okay, so I hope it's clear till now. Let's get to the next one. Henry Bradshaw from 1450 to 1513. So he also was a monk, so we, as I already mentioned, we are seeing a lot of priests, a lot of monks, a lot of these spiritual guys here. So he was a monk and he was an English poet. He wrote religious works, okay, and one of the works is Another Ballad to Spain, that is Saint, we, uh, Vivoj, I suppose, okay. It's very difficult to pronounce all this ancient 
language kind of middle english the kind of thing so ballad to saint where uh, where i suppose then we have john ripley uh, john ripley 1415 to 1490 he was an alchemist okay now listen those days alchemy was believed to be true alchemy means changing base metal that is lead into gold that was the idea there and popular fiction has like a lot of reference like harry potter the philosopher's stone all these things so that is the relationship that you should ha- uh, i mean uh, have an idea how it connects and it, the work was called the compound of alchemy or the 12 gates leading to the discovery of the philosopher's stone so we already said just like harry potter thing so whoever has the philosopher's stone will never die now here's the thing john ripley was writing about all these things and then comes thomas norton 1433 15 13 he was an english poet and he was also an alchemist and he wrote a book called ordinal of alchemy okay so what this guy does is he builds up from george ripley okay he took george ripley poem and wrote some couplets so when they were writing this alchemy also it's a literary work it's, it's not like simply writing some things they were in poetic form how to make the philosophers and there's an interesting story that thomas norton uh, died miserably he consider, he told everyone that he had made the philosopher's stone and people eventually believed that but he kept on telling that someone stole the philosopher's stone the elixir of life okay twice not once twice that's an interesting fact uh so if he had found it i don't think he would be so poor he would be very rich turning base metal into gold so this this was a kind of a hoax a futile thing they were doing those days okay next is osborn pokenham okay so he wrote legends of holy man okay now the connection is pretty simple legends chaucer has written something on the same lines Okay, so Legends of Holy Women is by Osborn Pokenham. Remember that, Legends of Holy Women. And instead of the Chaucer's tale where he talks about all this great female characters like Dido or, or uh, some wonderful characters like somebody here, he talks about holy women like St. Mary or some saints okay fatima or something no i'm not sure about fatima but then the others okay legends of holy women so that is osborn buckingham so next we see we have come from english chaucerians we are moving to scottish chaucerians scottish chaucerians are james one of scotland 1394 to 1437 now i'll just tell you a simple quiet story he was put into prison okay during the war between england and scotland and put him in the prison for 18 years, not one year, two years, but the 18 years, he learned a lot. That time he read Chaucer and he just followed Chaucer's style. He was so impressed by it. So he wrote a book called The King Book. It was a big poem, 1435. And then uh, Pebbles to the play, it was a poem. And uh, what happened was uh, during that time, Henry V was the king of England and James I was released during the period of Henry V after his death. Okay, so after Henry V dies, James I was released at the time. So remember, he was a king and he also wrote. Then we see Robert Henderson, 1425 to 1500. Pretty simple, he wrote a book called Testimony of Cressid. So it was influenced by Troilus and Cressida. Now, what happens is in the real tale, uh, Troilus and Cressida both die, but in this, the girl actually, you know, death of the only the girl, Troilus, is not dead. So uh, it is unlike Chaucer's ending. So he wanted to give a different take on it. So he wrote that. Robert Henderson, The Testimony of Receipt. So uh, D A, D E, and without E. So D A is Chaucer, D E is Shakespeare. Without it, it's Robert Henderson. Remember that. Next is. William Dunbar. He is remember he is known as a he is known as the Chaucer of Scotland. 
interesting right he is known as the chaucer of scotland the gold taj i like the poem okay he wrote a poem called the Go- golden taj then lament for the makers dedicated to this persons who and all he wrote for three people jeffrey chaucer john gower john lidgate we already seen all these people before jeffrey chaucer john gower john lidgate so lament for the makers that's an interesting way and then we see gavin douglas 1435 to 1522 aniad uh, we all know aniad is an italian epic um so epics just to recall your epics so in english we have paradise one paradise two and all these works so in uh, the other thing is homer's uh, odysseys and also the iliad and then in the italian aeneid all these works are myth- Uh, the great epics okay so then the place of honor king tut so william dubber was known as the chaucer of scotland he wrote golden taj and lament for the makers and then it was dedicated for three people and then we come across gavin douglas who wrote aeneid uh, i mean he translated aeneid into scottish very important uh, so the palace of honor and king tut were the other works next we see sir david lindsay 1492 1555 the dream of sir lindsay so it's easy the dream of sir lindsay was written by sir lindsay then the testimony of squire meltram then another important work is testimony of squire meltram so remember all these books as i already mentioned you can just listen to it at least unconsciously you'll remember these things next we see the court poets and they are important coach poet first we see thomas watt thomas watt immediately you should remember the petrarch sonnet he brought the sonnet to english i mean uh, england from the italian format he introduced sonnet form from italian to english okay the petrarch and sonnet then he also wrote code of venus following him there was the earl of surrey his name is henry howard he actually introduced sonnet after thomas watt okay so Henry VIII wife and Bolin was related to Henry Howard that's an interesting fact and we all know and Bolin is very important because divorcing all these women it caused a great stir in England history so her cousin was Henry Howard and loved at the train sonnet was by him so when we talk about sonnets who introduces we know like Thomas Watt or of sorry and uh, just a reminder sonnets i made of 14 letter 14 lines okay next is we go to the po- from poetry we move to prose william caxton he was the guy who print brought the printing press and to england such is the pioneer who started printing presses in england so he started with epics the recycle of the histories of troy and also he printed the canterbury tales modern author okay by thomas mallory whenever you see modern author that's by thomas t mallory remember that the the other thing is when we're talking about modern author it will be uh, tennyson works okay so that's the reference next is john fisher 1459 to 1535 treatise concerning the seven pentacle psalms religious works okay so that's a treatise excuse me uh next we talked about john fisher 1459 to 1535 treatise concerning the seven pentacle psalms and so they are religious works of course he did not agree to henry becoming the head of the church so he was put in charge now a bit of a history now what happens is henry VIII wants to divorce everybody and he wants to make his own role so he wants to divorce he wants to send a letter to vatican to get approval which he was not very happy about the pope and so what he did was okay the head of the church should be the king so the anglican church was formed okay he he made his own rules he put a bishop for himself as a canterbury bishop okay archbishop of canterbury still they are there so that's the anglican church and next we see uh, so thomas mallory whenever you talk about uh, thomas mallory i already mentioned it's modern author so it's divided into 21 books and it's all king author tales okay they're all k- about king author tales uh, so he collected everything in modern author so of course 
the tales are old french and all these things the tales are old but they were collected by him it was not like original work next we see john capgrave he was an english historian but most importantly a theologian so he worked on all this theological works in jerusalem in exodus that is genesis exodus and acts okay so he is researching on bible so he wrote all these topics so that is john capgrave next robert fabian he wrote a work called now we are talking about prose okay concordance of history so it's a huge work he starts from brutus to richard iii so the the founder of britain is normally called as brutus so from brutus till henry i mean richard iii he covered everything in this book and then we talk about thomas more 1478 to 1535 He was the MP and Chancellor. So whenever you see Thomas More, you should not forget one thing. He wrote Utopia. Utopia means it's an ideal place. It not it doesn't exist at all. Okay. So it was written in Latin first of all. It was satire of government. Okay. That can never be pro- perfect. And he mocked Henry VIII Kingdom. Okay, so Utopia is divided into two parts: introduction and details about the ideal human society. An ideal human society is not possible. So the opposite is dystopia, and dystopian literature is raging right now. Every book you see is kind of a uh, World War Z, um, Hunger Games, all these works. Dystopia. Margaret Atwood's famous work, uh, *Hans May Tale*. is a dystopian work meaning that is uh, it's about it's not an ideal society it's going to end i think it's going to go wrong so that's the opposite of it so when you are talk about thomas more remember utopia next we talk about only two people i suppose william tindale so in age of chaucer we'll be talking about john wyclef translated some part of the bible and now here we see william tindale he was uh, he had a professor called erasmus so erasmus actually translated new testament into greek into greek he was a greek scholar then we talked about tindale he was a translator of new testament in english okay he translated the new testament into english tindale was the one so tindale bibles are still available so but what happened was tindale left uh, he saw henry eight acting like this and so he left to you know germany where the 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 seed was sown for the reformations to happen right martin luther was against church and all these things protestants were going to sprout out any moment so he left first they followed the roman catholic church uh, then tindale left the country okay uh, because uh, as i already mentioned henry 8 started the anglican church and tindale was killed because of henry 8 sad thing okay so william tindale next we see miles Co- Clo- coverdale Hans Coverdale important he complete translation of the bible was done by Hans Coverdale now that is called uh, the great bible it is called the great bible and after the death of henry they called it the coverdale bible itself so he was the one who translated the full bible so whenever you get such questions uh, new testament tindale the greek erasmus then we talk about the anti bible is miles coverdale uh, similarly when we talk about erasmus it's only one work you should remember praise of all that we'll see it in the next thing next mystery plays what do you mean by mystery plays mystery plays are dramatized uh, dramatized stories from the bible okay they are mystery something dramatized stories like uh, ten commandments or something like that right moses story Miracle plays are saint stories. It doesn't mean it's from the Bible. It's about some saints. Those days there were so many saints. So what happened in their lives? Then the morality play. Every time you talk about morality play, every man is a wonderful play which has nine hundred lines, and it portrays every man in the country. So that is an allegorical work. Every man. Every man is a work. Okay. Then, as I already mentioned, Dicidius Erasmus, is a Greek philosopher, and his famous book. praise of holy about church foolishness remember this and the final person we are going to see is nicolo machiavelli now machiavellian is a famous guy 
and uh, modern references a lot okay so what happens is he wrote a work called prince so it was about how a king should be and all these things so in modern reference you can see his influence everywhere game of thrones 48 powers of the laws of power by robert green so, uh, such great works okay he is not like a literary personality he was the secretary of the second chancellor okay the term machiavellian is commonly used to describe the process of being cunning and ruthless in the pursuit of power it's all about power like how can i get to the top using my power okay so he also wrote a book called prince for lorenzo that's the name of the prince de medici that's the place from medici so that's the place and he wrote so whenever you talk about nicolo machiavelli is always the prince okay so we have seen the age of revival we have also completed the age of sorcerer next we'll be talking about contemporary british and american or the new works where you wouldn't have focused a lot so we'll touch on that so thank you so much thank you for your time so please do subscribe and like our channel to get more videos so thank you everyone